What does microaggression look like in the real world? Well, let's start with one common occurrence, which is on-demand representation. It's a human fact. When we feel different than everyone else around us, our stress levels are higher and we feel more stress than when we feel, quote, normal. It's part of the fight or flight instinct. And when we stand out from the crowd, our emotional triggers are just more vulnerable to getting switched on and stress can kill you. It's one thing to choose to be different and to accept the stress that comes along with that choice. But when your very identity is what makes you different and the color of your skin or your gender expression blasts that difference out to everybody around you who has eyeballs, it can become a full-time stressor. And guess what makes us feel more different, less seen for who we are, and more stressed than almost anything else? Other people who assume that we can speak to the thoughts and emotions and needs and wants of everybody else in the world that looks just like us. This happens when you ask the only black person in the room, what do black people want? The only childless woman in the room, why more young women aren't having babies? Or the only white man in the room, why white nationalism is on the rise? In fairness, some people, for example, black people, get this kind of on-demand representation requests a lot more than a lot of other people. So before you single somebody out, even with good intent, put on your empathy glasses and spare them the assumption that they can or want to represent everyone in the world just because they share a physical trait. At a minimum, ask them politely if they have an opinion they'd like to share and be okay if they choose not to. It will reduce stress for them and it'll make you feel like a kind human being because in that moment you are. What does microaggression look like in your life? Enlighten us in comments below. Thank you.